Coming to you live from the set of worship, <laughs> my kitchen. That's right. Uh, welcome to church. We're so happy to have you. This is where we record our worship sets every week uh, in the middle of nap time. That's right. While my kids are sleeping, Kirby and I destroy our house. We throw everything aside. The kitchen table goes. We throw over our, our couch and we set everything up for you so that you can have an amazing worship experience. We hope that it blesses you. We hope that you enjoy it. We hope that you're able to sing along and have an amazing experience every week. Uh, listen, we got a, an amazing service planned for you today. Pastor Yanni is on week four of our Psalm 23 series, and he has been doing a phenomenal job bringing this, this scripture to life verse by verse. If you are appreciative of everything that Pastor Yanni does, let him know in the chat. Say, Pastor Yanni, we love you, appreciate you. Thanks for everything that you do. He is an amazing lead pastor, and we're so blessed to have him. We also have today a special guest prayer, Jojo. She is bringing the prayer, and uh, age does not matter at this church. See, we love all ages, and Jojo is, is so blessed and anointed by God. So Jojo, proud of you. Love that you're praying for us today. So get comfortable, but get ready to worship. We're going to sing This Is Amazing Grace. And guess what? This is the day the Lord has made, but also the live stream. This is the live stream the Lord has made. So would you get up and get ready to rejoice with us? So let's roll the video in three, two, one. Hi, and welcome to our service. If you're new here, you may be wondering who we are and what this church is all about. Well, the heart of the matter is this. We're a group of people doing our best to love God and love those around us. One of the ways we express this love is through worship because our God is truly amazing. He created everything, great and small, and his love for us is incredible, powerful, and completely unconditional. We also spend time looking into His Word, the Bible, and receive practical teaching to guide us along His path in our everyday lives. But it doesn't end when the service is over. Throughout the week, we gather in groups to serve, pray, reach out to our community, and sometimes just to hang out and have fun. Life is full of challenges, and none of us are perfect. But we believe that's one of the reasons God has brought us together. We're all here to help and support each other through each step of life's journey, because nobody should have to travel alone. So thanks for joining us today. No matter who you are, we want you to know you are welcome. Come on, church. Let's celebrate that amazing grace. Oh, we would take our place. He breaks the power. You see that? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? His love is mighty and so much strong. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who The King above all kings. Come on, shout it out. This is amazing grace. Yes, Jesus, this is unfailing love. That should sing my place. Yeah, that should bear my cross. Yeah. you've done for me all you've done for me who brings who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son or daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nation with truth and justice shines like the sun and all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Yeah. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That should sing my place. 
Thank you, God. That's who we bear my cross. You lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Sing worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Oh, Jesus, worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Sing my So much for me, Jesus. Be exalted, oh God. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes. Hey. Oh, God, we give you all the glory. Say thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for how you love us, how you provide for us, how you heal us. And in those uncertain times, God, that you just wrap your arms around us. And church, some of you are maybe been cooped up in the, the house too long with the same people. And maybe you just need to get a little bit more patience with them. And, and one strategy is just to exalt them and just say positive things about them. And the Bible says to, to exalt the name of Jesus. And so let's do that. Let's, let's sing, I exalt thee.
above all the earth. Oh, thou art exalted far above all gods. Oh, thou, oh Lord, art high above all the in your homes just before we keep singing just close your eyes maybe you're not a singer but but just to say god i exalt you i give you praise thank you jesus for what you're doing let those words flow from your mouth let it be audible bring it out so that it can be heard in the room just say god thank you thank you lord thank you we exalt you god you are a great god Oh, jesus just clear that name in your house that name that is greater than any other name Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for keeping us safe under your blood. Thank you for just watching over us. And I ask that you know what you are doing with the coronavirus. And I ask that you will just take control. Help us to know that you are in control and there's nothing to worry about because you have this under control and you know what you are doing. Lord, I just want to pray for the frontline workers and our church family. I, I just want to ask that you will bring peace of mind to, to families who have lost other family members or loved ones, friends to the coronavirus. Exit, you will be with us kids. As school, we have online schooling. I ask that you'll just be with our teachers, be with be with our parents, and you will just be with us, and that you will help school to be open school soon. 
Lord, I want to pray for the homeless people who are on the streets, who have no shelter. I ask that you will just help the government to find somewhere for them to stay. And I ask that you will just help the government to op- find a way to open up jobs sooner. That way parents can pay other things and be able to buy more food for the family and I ask that you'll just be with the doctors and the scientists as they're trying to figure out a vaccine Lord I ask that you'll just be with them and you will just have make sure they have a peace of mind in Jesus name I pray amen Acts chapter 1 verses 1 to 11 in my first book I told you Theophilus about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. Hey Hey, Kinex, what's going on with the Olfants? I'm Pat. I'm Alicia. And I'm Aisha. And just in case, you know, you all forget who we are, um, we made name tags. As you know, oftentimes it's very difficult to tell us apart. Yeah. Because we are identical twins, so we have some help here. But on a serious note, uh, for the most part, we've, my sister and I have been in school. So uh, being in production-based programs and hands-on programs, for me, broadcasting my sister video production, it was difficult to transition to the online format. Um, but... We did pretty well by the grace of God and by his help, uh, we succeeded. We got through it. We actually finished on the 17th of April and I still have one more year left. Yeah, I finished my program. Yeah, so she's actually graduating, which is exciting yeah. and we're all proud. Since the girls have finished schooling, we spend a lot of time um, worshiping, um, watching movies and... Just talking a lot, really. Just yeah. talking a yeah, lot. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the, uh, talk about everything yeah. and everything yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty much a little bit too much i mean we've also been like catching up with like friends as well throughout this whole quarantine yeah. so we've been like video chatting and uh even reaching out to people we haven't talked to in a while like and even just checking in so like that's been pretty fun too we've been reading the bible a lot too as well yeah and, yeah very true so, yeah it's keeping yeah. us sane yeah. and not going a little crazy um some days are harder than others but for the most part we're in good spirits and and we're doing pretty well being at home. Yeah, that's pretty much what we've been doing since being stuck in the house and bored. Yeah, and thanks for, thanks for checking out our update in the family room. <laughs> <laughs> All offense, it was so great to see you. Um, twins, thank you so much for the name tags. They help so much. And Aisha, congratulations on graduating. That is huge. People at home. Give Aisha some love in the chat if you're watching live. It is so exciting that she's graduated. And if you have somebody at home who's graduated, let us know. We would love to celebrate with them. Um, We are going to now head into some church news. 
My name is Kirby and welcome to church. We have lots of things going on online that I'm going to update you with. Um, we have our small group still running. All of that can be seen on our church website. Just go to connectajax.com slash online. Uh, we also have on Wednesday nights, we have our prayer group at 8 p.m. And then Thursdays, the kids are meeting in the afternoon with Amy and Friday, the youth meet together. And so we want you guys to be fully connected as much as you can. So if you want the links to that, just subscribe to our church texts, or you can join our Facebook group, or you can even look on our church app. Alrighty, we want to also let you know that you can view past services if you haven't caught them. You can look on YouTube, just look up Connect Church of the Nazarene on YouTube, and you'll see a playlist of all of our past services. There's Mix It Ups on there, there's the kids' services, which are on 9.30 every Sunday morning. Um, on there as well. And there's also a connection time weekly with Pastor Yanni. It's a weekly devotional. He also just gives you a little update of what's going on in the church, how he's doing. So you can definitely check out um, all of that and hit subscribe and then you'll just get a little notification anytime we upload something new. All right, guys? We want to also say a big thank you to everybody for donating to our church still. We really appreciate it. Uh, we have um, opened up e-transfers as well as an option. So ways to give um, are now via e-transfer. Just email, our, email us. You can see it right here. Um, and then you can also use our church app or you could go to our church website and give online those ways. Okay? Kids! Get up. It's time to put on the armor of God because we are going to mix it up. Ah, it's time to mix it up. Let's bring in BJ, Mateo, and welcome to everybody who submitted a video. Let the Lord make you strong. Depend on his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor. And then you can remain strong against the devil's evil plan. Let the Lord make you strong. Strong depend on the mighty power, put on all of God's armor, and you can remain strong against the devil's evil plans. Come on, Ephesians, Ephesians, six verse eleven. Ephesians, Ephesians, one more time. Make you strong. Come on, show your muscles. Depend on his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor. Say it. Then you can remain strong against the devil's evil plans. Come on. Ephesians, Ephesians, hey. Six verse eleven. Ephesians, Ephesians, hey. Mateo, hey, every person who submitted a video, you guys rock. Put on your armor and you will remain strong against the devil's evil plans. Amazing. Pastor take it away. Boo! Let's put our hands together for Pastor Jeremy and for BJ and for those who put together the Mix It Up video. Thank you so much for your contribution to the church. Well, we miss you. We miss seeing you and meeting with you at our church. I remember a couple of months ago when uh, we were still meeting at the Cineplex Ajax Movie Theater. After the service was over, we would have to kick some of you out because the movies were starting. 
And uh, I just wish that those times would be back when we can just hang out and talk and catch up after service as we are drinking our coffee and have some refreshments. But uh, I believe we will be back soon. Probably many of you heard and saw that Ravi Zacharias passed away on uh, May 19th. He was battling with cancer and he was a great preacher, a great author. He has many books. He was uh, originally born in India and moved to Canada and uh, did his studies at Tyndale University. And he was just uh, a, a great addition, a great figure in the evangelical churches in Canada and in North America, in fact. So please pray for his family and uh, go online and find some of his books. Uh, you can find some of the videos about him on YouTube. He, he was a great guy. Uh, I, we hope that you are home and you are safe and you are doing well. I know it's, it must be uh, st uh, tough on some of you. I just would like to let you know that on Wednesday nights we pray for you. We gather at 8 p.m. over Zoom and we pray for our church and for people outside of our church. And uh, we recognize that it is not uh, the most convenient time for, for some of us. Uh, maybe you are home alone and you are bored and you are just lonely or maybe you're home with your kids and you're just super busy. But uh, we just wanted to let you know that we pray for you and we, we bring you before our Heavenly Father so we know that you are in good hands. Uh, ha have you been enjoying uh, our uh, Psalm 23 sermon series? Say yes. Well, today uh, we're going to move forward and we are going to take a look at another uh, Bible verse uh, this uh, psalm, Psalm 23, has six Bible verses and every sermon we would take a look at one. And today uh, we're going to look at Psalm uh, 23, verse 4. So if you have a Bible, please open it up or you can use your Bible app on your phone, the, uh, the Uversion Bible app, and you can see my sermon notes. You can add to them, you can save them to your phone. And, uh, but before we do that, I just wanted to mention as at the beginning of every service that uh, some of the ideas are coming from Philip Keller. He wrote this book uh, titled A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. And he was a, a shepherd uh, living in North Africa. And uh, he just g gives us a totally different perspective on this psalm. So every time I talk about, you know, uh, sheep and how to f feed the flocks, obviously those tips and insights are not coming from me. Uh, it's coming from him and it's a great book. I recommend for you to read it. So today we're going to read Psalm 23 and I'm going to read the first four verses of this psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Amen. What an awesome Bible verse this is. Uh, we hear it often. We are familiar with it. And uh, it's interesting to see that now we passed halfway in this psalm and the first three Bible verses, it's talking about the Lord, our good shepherd, how he is our shepherd and how he lets us rest and how he renews our strength. And today we shift a little bit and now we see that David, who wrote this psalm, he started to talk about himself and he says that as I am walking through dark valleys, uh, I'm not afraid because you are uh, beside me. We have to re still remember that King David here is talking about from a sheep perspective. So it basically is saying the Bible verse is that he as a sheep is going through dark valleys. But why would, they, why would he do that? Or why would sheep go through dark valleys? Don't they just stay at the farm all year around? Well, uh, Philip says, who wrote the book, saying that as the as the year would go around and as you know spring would pass and as they would get into summer it would just get hotter and hotter so they would look and they would try to go to a higher ground go up into the mountains why would they do that 
Well, if you go up in the mountains, it gets colder. It means that they are going to have more rain. If there is more water, it means there are more vegetation. So as it's getting hotter and it's getting drier at the summer, it's, it's not uncommon that the shepherd would take his flock or her flock and would bring them up to the mountain and uh, where they would stay for most of the summer and then when fall would come and it would start to get cooler that's then they would make their way back to the farm but this they have this this schedule uh, all around the uh, year so the bottom line is that they would make this long journey for for a higher ground where there are more grass and more food for the sheep it is a long journey the sheep would only go very slowly we have to remember that especially in david's time they didn't have transporting trucks or anything like that they would have to walk and it would take a long time you know sheep would take uh, their time they would you know feed on the grass move a little bit feed on feed on the grass things like that so it was a long journey and it was also a dangerous journey there was many dangers around them. They could fall off if it was steep and rocky. Some animals would be able to get to them. This is where bandits would try to steal them. And so the shepherd really had to be on, on guard and watch out to make sure that the flock is good. And David knew about this. He was a shepherd himself. And we see that, uh, for example, one story when Samuel, who was a prophet, and he received word from God to go and anoint David. He would go to Jesse, who was uh, David's uh, father, and say, Jesse, where are your sons? I, I received word that I have to anoint one of them as the king. So Jesse would bring out all of his sons, and then Samuel would go through them. It's like, mm, no, this is not it. Mm, no, this is not it. And then they say, oh yeah, we have one more, the youngest one, but he's with the sheep, he's far away. And then Samuel says, okay, send for him. See, he went away with the, with, the, with the flock. So that's why they are basically, they are waiting for David to come back because he took the flock away where it was better for the flock to be. So David knew this experience. David knew that, that transporting the flock is, is a lot of work, it's dangerous. It, it just entailed a lot of uh, work and energy on his behalf. He knew it from first-hand experience. So when he's talking about here, he knows what he's talking about and he says this, Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. We are going to uh, break this uh, verse again in uh, two parts. And we are going to take a look at uh, the first part and then the second part. Uh, so first of all, what I wanted to share uh, with this is that every mountain has its valleys. It's really important for us to remember. As the sheep would try to make, uh, go to the higher ground, go to the, you know, for the mountain tops as, as high as possible, uh, you know, they would have to go through dark valleys. Uh, it, there was no uh, other way around it. Shepherds would know that if they want to go up top and if they want to get to the best places, uh, they might have to go through dark valleys. There, that was the best route. That was, there was just sometimes there is no way around that. And uh, sometimes maybe you like to go hiking. Where is the best view when you are hiking? Well, you want to go to the, to the mountain top, to the, as high as possible, because that's when you get the best view. If you go to the CN Tower, you are not going to uh, stop the elevator halfway because you don't want to look out there. You want to go all the way to the top. Even all the way to the, if you go over the top, you can even go a little bit further if you buy an extra ticket. I don't know if you know about this. Or if you are brave, you can actually go out on the edge because that's where you can get the best experience. Well, I am afraid of heights, so I would never go out there. But if you are up for it, that's where you would get the most, uh, best experience, the best view on the top of the tower. Um, and I believe that uh, many times we have this mountaintop experience, 
many times we would uh, experience the Holy Spirit, experience, you know, God's presence in our lives, sometimes more than others. And uh, we, just, we just would like to just get up there, just be there. And we want to kind of be air, airlifted up there. And we just, oh, we think, oh, I'm just going to pray real quick that God would strengthen my relationship with him. And then all of a sudden it would be good just like that. Well, guess what? It doesn't work that way. As we want to experience this mountaintop experience and have a strong relationship, a good relationship with God, many, time, many times in our lives we have to go through these dark valleys. We can't avoid it, we can't go around it, and when we go through these, these dark and deep valleys, that's when we can really have a really awesome and good mountaintop experience, when we feel the presence of God, when we experience the power and the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds, and, and we feel that God is moving, and we feel that our hearts are on fire, and because first we had to go through all that deep and dark valleys. Every mountain has its all, all valleys and you have to go through them sometimes. Well, the reality is that, that the valley is often dangerous, but temporary and the best way through. As I said before, that as the sheep and the flock would go through with the shepherd, there was so many dangerous uh, things around them. Weather could have caused a lot of issues, rain and flood and rocks and uh, steep hills, predators, uh, st sudden storms and, and stuff like this. That shepherds, they had to focus on the goal. They had their in mind that, okay, it might be tough right now and I really have to be on guard, but we will get up there and it will be better there. So they were always, you know, always goal oriented. They had, they knew that it's just going to be temporary, uh, but they also knew that that's, that's the best way. And sometimes there's no other way around that. So shepherds were able to focus on that goal. And uh, I, I just want you to remember that as you are maybe in a dark valley and you experience that, and you try to, um, you know, me trying your best to get out of it. I believe that sometimes that valley, that route you had to take is, is the best for us. God is leading through that and there might be a reason for that. And yes, it is dangerous, but we have to remember that it is temporary and that might be the best route for you to go through that. So I have a question for you, what I want you to think about. What is your darkest valley? What is, what, what is the situation you are in right now? And uh, I, you might not want to leave that in a comment section below, and that's fine, it might be personal. But I, I just really would like to encourage you to think about this, because I believe many times we are going through these darkest valleys and we, we don't know them, we don't recognize them, and we are just wondering why, why are things around us the way they are without even recognizing it. What, is, what are you facing right now? I will give you 30 seconds to think about it. Uh, grab your coffee, 30 seconds on the clock, let's go. Thank you so much for, for thinking about this very important question. What is, the, what is the valley you are in right now? I want you to bring this situation before God. I would like to encourage you to open up about this with God. And I believe that He can help you to go through this dark valley. I believe that it's very important for us to remember that it is temporary like everything. And sometimes it is the best way through to the mountaintop. The next idea, I wanna, what I wanted to share is that no valley is too dark for God. Can I get an amen? Say amen. 
Um, sometimes uh, in some um, translations we would read that, that as I am walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, the darkest valley is, is, is death. But it's so good to see that Jesus was victorious over death. We just re remembered and celebrated that after he died, he didn't stay dead, but he resurrected. He was victorious and he is alive and he is well. And he went ahead of us to prepare a place for us because Jesus is just so much more powerful than death. So if the darkest valley is death and Jesus was victorious over that, it means that, that no valley is too dark for God to handle. Say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He is so good, he is amazing, he is powerful. And it basically this says that God is telling you that I am with you even in the valley of death, even in your darkest time, I am there and I am with you. We hear this Bible verse, this scripture at funerals often, and I believe that this scripture part has message for, for the family and friends who are there for the, the funeral, for their loved ones, but it's also a good reminder and it has message for that person who passed away. You know, as the people are and family are there and, and looking at the coffin and they just their hearts are heavy, it is a it is a it has a message for them that they can be comforted because they are really in that dark valley and they are really facing death and um, and they can be comforted that God is with them in that dark dark valley. And also it has a message for, for that person who passed away because it's talking about that how Jesus is the way and because of Jesus there is a way to heaven. So that's a good news for that person. If that person who passed away believed in Jesus Christ as his or her Lord and Savior, that there is a way through this, this dark, this darkest valley towards heaven. We can go to heaven. We have the possibility uh, because Jesus is the way and he opened up the heaven for us. Are you afraid of dying? I'm sure most of us are concerned about that. But if you are really scared because you don't know what your future might hold for you, you don't know what's going to happen with you after you die, well, I just would like to encourage you this morning. Maybe this is the time when you recognize that you can have future through Jesus Christ. You can have forgiveness through Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ has died for you on the cross so you don't have to experience eternal death but you can live forever. You can experience inter eternal life forever if you believe in Jesus Christ. Well, if you believe in Jesus, even as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you have to fear no evil. Don't be afraid. Have no fear in your life because Jesus is by our sides. And the next point connects with this really nicely. Fear fades in the presence of the Good Shepherd. We're just talking about fear and how that as you are going through dark, dark times and dark valleys, fear is, is present in your, in your life. And... Uh, and, and many times, we, as we have these in our lives, it's totally fine to be scared. You know, we can't avoid that. It is just a natural uh, feeling that comes to us. But I believe that what we do after we are scared, that is very crucial and that is very important. Do you start panicking? Or what do you do? Do you turn to God and you are trying to get His peace in your heart? Many of us are saying, oh, we claim that we have a confidence in Christ. We have a confidence in God. But as soon as something is not going on our way, on our term, the way we want it, we start doubting our faith, we start doubting God, and then we, we easily turn away from Him. And, and that is just not right. Well, if you claim, if we claim that we have confidence in Christ, then we don't have to have fear in our, our lives. We can deal with that and we can go against that. Fear fades away in the presence of, of the Good Shepherd. If you turn towards God, He will help you to deal with fear and don't panic. You can face fear fearlessly. 
I came off with that. I think that's a good idea. You can face fear fearlessly if you have God by your side. Don't be afraid. But be a channel of blessing to others. Uh, you can help others through their, their dark valleys if you have been through it. You experience something, something what you know was difficult, something might be what something you are not proud of. But after you went through that, that valley, you know the route, you know how to go around uh, dangerous points, and you can help people to go through that same valley because you have been there. And uh, in this way, uh, you know, you can turn that not so pleasant experience into something good, into something more beneficial, and uh, it can be a blessing to ours. You know, God can bless you in, in that dark shadows, in that valley, and then you can be a blessing uh, towards others around us. Uh, God can bless you, and then you can become a blessing towards others. All right, so I just would like to give you, again, 30 seconds to think about this scripture we, we talked about. I believe it's really powerful and I believe it's really helpful. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. I give you 30 seconds to just really take this in. All right, let's take a look at the second part of verse number four, which says this, your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. It is really interesting, isn't it? As I'm thinking about a rod or a staff, I, I, I don't really feel comforted. I don't know about you, but I just don't feel comforted. I think about a piece of wood. How can they be comforting for me? And what does uh, King David mean when he says this? Well, uh, let's take a look at the, the rod first. And the rod basically is a, a little short stick. It's something like a baseball bat, all right? Uh, maybe even probably shorter than this. I actually got this uh, baseball bat from Louisville when we went to NYC eight years ago with Matt Lou. Shout out to Matt Lou. We went uh, and we didn't know, but there's actually a museum for baseball bats and a factory where they make them. But uh, anyhow, this is a little baseball bat and they say that, that a rod is something like this, a, a short piece of wood. And they, basically the shepherd would, would use this as a weapon of choice of, of defense uh, t for himself and for the flock. So basically when animals would come, he would, you know, like sling this and try to scare away uh, all, the, all the animals, they would use this if they would get closer to bushes to make sure there are no snakes in the bush. So it was basically a piece of equipment. They didn't carry ar around a lot of stuff. Again, you have to remember that the journey was long from the farm to, uh, to, the, to the mountain. And they, they had this and they used that to protect themselves. And not just against the animals, but if people would try to go and, and steal the sheep. So the rod represents God's protection. And, uh, and I believe that David used it. We see scripture when David is fighting off lions. And, uh, and he probably had one of these and used that. And so the rod represents God's protection. And the rod also represents God's power and authority. And as I was thinking about it, okay, now it, it starts making a little more sense that as David is talking about the rod and he just experienced God's protection. And when you and I, when we experience God protect, God's protection, we feel comforted, we feel comfortable because we know that, okay, God is around us and God is protecting us. And no matter what's going to happen, he is there to protect us. And he might not use a rod. He might not use a piece of wood, 
But God can use situations, God can use people, God can move and pull things together in the most miraculous ways. God can just intervene in your life and perform miracles. God can step into your life today and protect you through a miracle or through whatever He chooses. And I just would like to encourage you to believe that and be comforted by the fact that, that God is your protection. The second thing we need to take a look is this Bible verse is talking about the staff. So I brought a staff here and obviously this is a very weak staff because this is from our Christmas play. And the staff they say, uh, sometimes people think that the rod and the staff would be actually one piece of, of equipment, but it, it is actually two. The rod is something smaller, something used to for defense, and then the staff is a, is a different one, and it you see it has a different shape. It would be longer, and then the end would be actually curved, and that has a purpose. What I will I'm going to talk about uh, just a little bit. So this is the staff. The other one was uh, the rod, and um, and and um, and the staff here. Let me just go in my slide to the next one. The staff uh, represents, uh, the staff is used to rescue. The sheep would often not listen and they would go to dangerous and steep uh, areas which was where it was rocky. They maybe saw a little bit of grass and they would climb in for their grass, but they would be stuck and they would not be able to get out. They would fall in and they would be there and they would just cry until the shepherds would go there and get them. Or in other situations, the, the sheep would go into bushes where it would be just a lot of hooks and really tight and, you know, like that with lots of thorns. And they would, after a while, because of their thick wall, they would just get stuck there. So the shepherds would go and try to rescue them. But many times the shepherds would not be able to get down into that deep and dark rocky area or into the bush. So they would use their stuff and that's why they would have a hook at the end of it. And they would reach down or they would reach out and kind of bring the, sh the sheep back so they can bring it back to the flock. And as I'm thinking about this picture, I just see that often because we are stubborn, we get ourselves in the situation we can't get out of. We are stuck, we feel lost, we feel that if we are in a dark position where we can't get ourselves out to. And then we are just thinking there, oh, how did I get here? What, what did I do to get here? How did I get here? And how can I get out of here? And you try your best, but you just can't. And then you just experience God's presence. And you just experience that He's rescuing. He's reaching down to you. He's reaching out to you. And He brings you back. And He, he brings you back close to Him because you might wandered off. And you might got into a situation you couldn't get out of. What an awesome reminder. And that is really comforting that with, that with the help of God, we can go back and we can join the flock and we can join God's presence. So the staff is used to, used to rescue. The second one is the staff is used to guide. The shepherd would put the staff sometime on sh some sheep and then they would guide some of them uh, along the path. And um, it is like, you know, like, in this way, they would be able to stay in touch. And then the last one is the staff gives rest. The, the staff is not only for the sheep, but also for the shepherd. They could rest on it. And it's a symbol that we can find rest uh, when we lean on the Lord. Uh, are you tired? Are you weary? Do you have something going on in your life? I just would like to encourage you to be remembered that you can lean on your Heavenly Father and you can find rest. You don't have to be afraid, fear not, and we can be comforted by all these things. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Amen.
Now if you're gonna go back, uh, I'm gonna send you back to Pastor Jeremy and we are going to sing a song. And I would like to encourage you to, to join us and sing with us together. And one of the verses says this, that I was lost, but he brought me in. And I believe this connects really well with the idea of God rescuing us. And, and when we are lost, he reaches out to us and he brings us back. As we sing together, uh, remember that, that we have an awesome God. Amen. Blessing and peace. Who am I the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me and all his love for me. All his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free in me. How much I Oh God, yes I am. Yeah. We have passed, we have ransomed, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me with a sigh. Oh, it's free me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Sing, I am chosen. Chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free. Sing it out. Always free in me. We are child. We are a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father, in my father's house. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. And I'll declare in my father, in my father's house. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Oh, thank you, God. Not forsaken, and I am who you say I am. I declare you are for me, not against me, and I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me, and I am. You say I am, I am chosen, not forsaken, I am who you say I am, you are for me, not against me, I am who you say I am, I am chosen, not forsaken, oh I am who you say I am, you are for me. Not against me, 
a place for you and we're glad that you joined us here in this place we invite you to join us online but also when we return to our theater every sunday at 10 a.m god loves you we love you and we wish you a great week join us for the see you after church zoom party we just want to hang out and say hi god bless you and have a great week oh.